Ladies and gentlemen, how are we doing? Just have a look at this. Uh, I'll have a look at this chat. Arigato, my Nike. <laughs> my Nike. What is going on, everybody? We are here today going live. I know it was a little bit late, as always. Here we go. Here we go. Hold on, you're all coming in. I'm going to have to put my glasses on if I'm going to read. That new dude looks good on Mike. Look forward to seeing him commentating like this. Hey, babe, will you bring my glasses and put stuff, please? Thank you very much. So the sumo thing, uh, International Sumo League Club Sumo, is uh, going down, but we haven't got anything. Unless you want to see these guys commentating, uh, sorry, talking about the fights or the the combat athletes, the gigantic, big, fat sumo wrestlers. Um, so we're going to get into, uh, we're going to watch that stuff. But first of all, we're going to answer some of your questions on here. Um, and yeah. Give me what you got. Obviously, no man alive. No man alive. More often. You want that more often? I'm not sure everyone else does. My God. Uh, Rebecca is in the background. I'm starving. I've been out all day. Did my podcast. Had a couple of meetings. Rushed back. She got stuck in traffic. So in a minute, she's going to present me with some cheese on toast. And maybe a little drink. A little drinky poo. Um, but yeah, International Sumo League. They said that I uh, can stream their event. On, uh, on a live, and I won't get copyright struck. So I thought we might do that. It gives us something to talk about. Um, right now, I'm looking at the commentators. We've got Ben Davis. Let's have a look at these guys. That's Ben Davis on the left, and that is... Who is that on the right? I don't know, but for some reason, the name has disappeared. It is Kenny White. Woo! Good old Kenny White. What's going on, Ken? Old Ken Flo. Talking of Ken Flo's, today on the Believe You Me podcast, I was joined by the legendary... Kenny Florian, the original Ken Flo. Uh, so I don't know what they're talking about. Babe, get my glasses and I'll take a little drinkle stinkle. The usual, please, babe. Right, I'm starving. A little bit of cheese on toast. Can't go wrong with a bit of cheese on toast. That said, I can't read anything now. So um, here's a stupid question for you. I know what you're all going to say. Sean Strickland, Drinker Duplessis. Who won last week? We know that Drick has won, but a lot of people feel that Strickland was robbed. I don't think anybody was robbed. I think it was a very, very close fight. Oh, look at these guys. Look at these guys. Go on. There's a, some real beef on display there. <coughs> some raw power, you might say. Let's have a little listen to what they're saying. Hold on. Oh, match one, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for your first match tonight? Are we ready for the first match tonight? Please welcome to the Dojo, Bill Reed and Osuna Arashi. Well, you here can we see go. The tail of the tape for the first bout. The first bout of the night. It is Kosuno Arashi and William Reg. We've got America. That will be Sean Strickland. Uh, taking on whoever the bloody hell it was. I'll take the gold ones, babe. Give me, give me the Jeffrey Dahmer glasses. There we go. I can see. There we go. And the Lord said, let there be light. And now I just need a nice little cocktail, babe. Okay. Right, don't worry. We're gonna, I'm going to talk to you guys in just a second. This is the worst start to a live ever. How is it live? I can't even see the questions. Right, hold on. She could have given him a wipe for me, couldn't she? She could have given him a little clean. Uh, I'm just going to bring your comments up up here. So just bear with me just for a second, guys. Uh, but yeah, I was talking about Sean Strickland a second ago. I feel Sean lost, okay? A very, very close and entertaining fight. But he needed to do more than just a jab. And that's ultimately why Strickland won it. Because Strickland was, obviously. Uh, sorry, Dr Drickus won it, pardon me. I'm doing several things at once. I'm trying to open this bloody live. There it is. All right, now I've got to pop out the chat. Chat's popping. Oh, look at this. If only I was organized and did all this stuff beforehand. But as you know, I'm not organized. So there we go. Boom. Now, got to get back to the sumo. International sumo going down right now. So, Rig looks like me waiting in line at USADA. Let's move me out of the way. So we've got Rig versus Kosono Arashi. Look at this. What do we think? Who takes this one? 
Obviously, you're going to push each other out of the, the circle, right? I don't know much about it, but I do know that. I reckon I'd look good in one of those diapers, though. Michael Bisping said it best. I did say it best. De plus, he had takedowns. He had take. Oh, look at that. He's out. He pushed him in the throat. Let's have a listen to the commentary. Was that illegal? Battle one winner, Osuna Arashi. That's it. Done. All right, so I'm assuming it's best of three. Let's have a look at the audience members. Oh, people, they're not living in the moment. They've got the phones out, ringside. Hold on, let me finish this cheese on toast, guys. I do apologize. What the fuck is this? You're right, Lou J. <laughs> what is this? Hi, Mike. Can you explain how you know who is on the pay-per-view commentary team? How far in advance do you know if you are on it? Um, well, Kenny. Yeah, I'm sorry to tell you guys, this American sumo wrestler is garbage. And we'll go back to that in a minute. Um, yeah, so we get booked for the commentating roles way in advance. Um, way in advance. So, But we don't necessarily know who else is on the broadcast duties with us. Um, I'll get an email from production and uh, yeah, they'll say, X, Y, Z, these are the dates. Are you available? You know, would you like to do it? And I always say yes, because I ain't turning work down. I'm a right little workhorse. Um, but generally, you don't find who you're commentating with until a little bit soon. I mean, you could. You could ask. You could ask in advance if you wanted to, but it's not that big of a deal to me. I'll work with anyone. Works well with others as it always said on my school report. All right, anyway, enough bollocks. So that was eventful, weren't it? I think that, I think that circle's a little bit too small. I really do. These are big men. Let me eat this. I promise you, I'll be done. I'm starving. I've been out all day. Almost done. This is the worst live ever, babe. Just say hello. Just talk for a minute. Just talk for a second while I just do this. Please. That's why I eat this cheese on toast. Just come and say hi. Let's get over here. You don't need it on. Just talk to these people a second. Hello, people. Yeah. Is it sumo? Yeah, just while I eat this. Just while just, I eat just it. Just hurry up then. I will, I will. Answer uh, the question. Uh, rain and crying. Enjoy your food. Go on, son. Lou J. Send lawyers guns and money. <laughs> uh Mm. Hello. Can't, don't just say hello. No, someone said hello. I'm just saying hello back. <laughs> no. It's Rebecca. R E B E C C A. Anyway. Please put Mike be out to the 219 kilo sumo match. Okay. Happy uh, Australia Day. Is it? Right. Well, You're yeah, terrible. Yes, it is. It's Australia Day. Happy Australia is it really? Day, then. I guess so. I forgot. Yeah. Hold on. We got some. Oh, we got interviews. Let's have a little listen to this. Let's see the personalities. Good job tonight and so good luck. All cool, calm, and collected. Do, do you want to hear? Osuna do you want to yeah. hear? I don't blame you, babe. I don't blame you, darling. All right, guys. Let's look ahead to our That's it. I've eaten my cheese on toast. I was starving. I was absolutely starving. Now I can focus, okay? Cheers to uh, the sumo players. So next up, we have got Ivan from America and Soslan from America. Um, did you make that cheese on toast for him? She did. She did, Lou Jay. She did very much. Why does Izzy deserve a title fight next? Well, hold on. Let me just mute this a second. I'll tell you why, more than likely, because he defended the belt many, many times. He did. He defended the belt a lot, right? So... Sean's never defended it and I'm not talking bad about Sean I think he's great for the sport and he's got a tremendous fan base and, and for the most part I really enjoy Sean uh, and I think he's a tremendous fighter but he just became the champion and then he lost it in, on his first defence I don't think somebody like that generally garners an immediate rematch certainly not when there's other people like an Israel Adesanya the fight with Drickus and Izzy will do big business I think a rematch with Drickus and Sean would do big business as well. But, you know, it is what it is. There you go. I just got here. Me too, brother. Me too. Yes, intangible. Let's have a look. We'll see what these guys are doing. All right, any other questions? DDP, two, three, and four. Yeah, same here. Same here. Round one was definitely 
Round one was definitely Sean. Round five was for Sean. Uh, but they were close, though, because Drickus was the only one really fighting with a passion to win. I'm not saying Sean wasn't fighting. Of course he was, but he was fighting predominantly behind the jab, right? Whereas Drickus was using a lot of head kicks, body kicks, more dangerous, threatening shots. And Sean was going back quite a bit. As I say, he did fantastic. He did. But halfway through the fight, when it's not trending your direction, you got to have a plan B. you got to have a plan B. Look at these guys, though. How many plans have these got, do you think? One. Uh, Push him. One's holding his own, though. He's, he's staying heavy in his face. Oh, my God. Throws him down. A toss. Spike back. Yeah, push down, man. Combination with that down there. Very, very good. They should have yeah. allowed punches. They should have allowed a little slapping. Combat sumo. I'd watch that, never mind club sumo, which is great, don't get me wrong. But if you could, oh, he picked him up, slammed him down. Nice little bit of technique there. Anyway, let's go back to the chat. We could have done with some sushi. Sean the Jobber Strickland. Ooh, you mean Jabber. Mike is a British national treasure. Big up the camera, thank you very much, as I was eating my cheese on toast. Uh, is O'Malley ducking his top five? Well, how is he ducking the top five? He's fighting Marlon Cheeto very next. After that, I don't think he's going to go up and fight Ilya Taporia. I don't think he's going to go up and fight Alexander Volkanovsky. <sighs> Certainly when there is a cold, clear contender, Triple C, alliteration. I'm not the king of cringe. There is a Triple C right there. There is a cold, clear contender uh, by the name of Corey. Quadruple C. A cold, clear contender, Corey. Corey Sandeg, and he's going to be next up. Simple as that. And I can't imagine that... Any other fight would be next for Sean. Uh, so, yeah. Have you seen the Roadhouse trailer? I have. Connor looks great. He looked very muscular. He did. Looked like he'd been on some quite the weightlifting regimen. Uh, maybe that's why it took so long to get back to the UFC. And he still isn't back, is he? And there's still not anyone taking place in this sumo stuff. Anyway, Mike... Could be Anthony Smith tomorrow. I don't know about that, boys. Definitely not. He's an active fighter. Um, I did four miles this morning. I lifted some weights. I still do a little jujitsu. Nah, man. Anthony's uh, one of the best lightweight fighters in the world currently. I was the best fighter at middleweight a while ago. Seven years ago. This been watching sumo. Is DZ competed? Oh, brilliant. That was a good one, McCarthy. Oh, Daryl McCarthy. Oh, we, we got a little interview. Should we check out the technique? Hold on. Oh, I paused it. Oh, it's the first match, and I already feel pretty warm up. I'm planning to be champion today, so I'm going hard. Yeah, and you look at uh, Walk us through your last two matches. Was that the plan to get the Mawashi in and move him out from there? Well, yeah, I think we don't need to see any more of that right now. Uh, but good for him. Congrats. Get the Mawashi. Uh, oh, yeah, my heart is. Right, so anyway, what do we want to talk about? Um, when I went to school in the UK, Townley High School, Townley, yeah, Burnley, we used to do sumo, me and my mates. We called it wedgie spastic sumo. Yeah, uh, I have fake knees too. Were you able to roll and spar again after yours? That's a good question, Jeremy Augusta, because, yeah, I can roll, but it's weird. It's a very weird sensation just going on my knees at all. You know, uh, when I'm doing jiu-jitsu, of course. It's the only reason I would go on my knees. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's it's weird. Like if I drop something on the floor and I've got to kneel down to get it, I don't know, say the remote control goes underneath the couch and I've got to get it. I can't do that. I can't get on my knees. On the mat, ju doing jiu-jitsu, I can. Uh, but it's still a very strange sensation. I wouldn't say it's pain, but it's just like a really, really weird sensation that I just want to end immediately. Anyway, next matchup, guys. Let's have a look. What we got here? We've got Mike Sordino versus, oh, Brazilian flavor, Rui Junior or Junio. You don't pronounce the Rui Junior. Ever considered stem cells? Buzzers cry. I have, actually. And I think I might do it. I'm going to fly down to Colombia, I believe. I've heard a lot of great stuff. Uh, about the benefits of stem cells. And there's a company there called BioAccelerator. There's quite a lot of uh, UFC fighters have gone down there. They all 
swear blind by it. They all say that they get a lot of uh, benefit from it. So, yeah, I'm probably going to do it. In fact, they've sent me a contract. All I've got to do is read the thing and sign it. They've sent me the contract about 50 times, but I'm a very busy man. English Terminator. Okay, would you care to elaborate? There's a 160 pound weight difference, someone says. All right, we've got the next matchup. Let's have a look. Who would be the best person in the UFC to be a sumo wrestler? Of course, DC would definitely be one of the first ones that you think of, right? Look at the belly on him on the left, though. Look at that. That is, that's an impressive overhang right there. This guy means business. He looks Russian as fuck. Oh, Max Udino, know him well. Actually American, little bow of respect. Little bow of respect first. Should we see what the commentator is saying? He's whipping him into a frenzy. From Brazil, presenting Huey Jr. Huey Jr. Uh, what's this? Hi, Bispin. I'm eating eggs and sausage for dinner. Is that weird? No, it's not. Not weird at all. That's fantastic, BCW. Good for you. I had sausage and egg for lunch, as it happens, just for a change. We call it the usual in my house. I have bacon, sausage, egg every single goddamn day. I am getting a little bored of it. See, that's one position I couldn't do, though, with my knees. That wouldn't be good. All right, just started your book match. Much, much respect. Thank you, Daniel218. I appreciate that, buddy. Uh, yeah, so wrestlers from the U uh, sumo wrestlers. Here we go. Oh, look at that. Girth. That's what it's all about. The guy with the big belly, granted, doesn't look the best by the pool. But in a sumo wrestling matchup, very effective. Very effective. The man's disciplined. You know, when you see him at the buffet, eating a lot. He's preparing for this moment. He's been preparing for this moment his entire life. Someone says, uh, Ape Dog says, tied to Avasa. Oh, picks him up, throws him out of the ring, and that's that. Lands on top of him, though. There's a lot of strength, though, to be fair. I'm, jo I'm messing around, of course I am, you know, being a little bit childish, as is normally my way. But uh, these guys do have tremendous power, to be fair. Very, very powerful people. Uh, anyway... Uh, so I thought the belly dump, belly bump. Yeah, they should. No, so I think out of uh, the, the UFC roster, yeah, Taito Avasa would be a good one. Daniel Cormier for sure. It's all going to be heavyweights, hasn't it? Curtis Blades, oh, he'd be fantastic. Yeah. To be honest, any of the good wrestlers, the wrestlers would be good. Hey, look, listen, do you think Alexander Volkanovsky can cle keep clearing out the division with all the up-and-comers? Like the Chinese sensation, Far Cool. Fuck you. Yeah, I see what you did there. I see what you... Derek Lewis. Derek Lewis would be another... Parker Porter. What do these names all have in common? Heavyweights. Big heavyweights. Big, big heavyweights. Anyway. The Chosen One. Why do fighters shave their body hair? Funnily enough, I was talking about this on... Uh, we're just, we're just going to go back to full screen for a moment so you can see me in all my glory. We were talking about this on the Believe You Me podcast today because when I was on The Ultimate Fighter, um, when I coached The Ultimate Fighter season 14, everybody on my team that I was coaching and all my assistant coaches, which were American, they all shaved their legs. They all had shaved legs and I just didn't get it. And they were actually shaming me and talking crap because I didn't shave my legs. They were like, man, that's some hairy legs you got there, man. Man, Mike, why you got hairy legs? I'm like, what do you mean, why have I got hairy legs? Why the fuck have you got shaved legs? You're not a woman. And anyway, I'm not going to lie. I, uh, it got to me. It got me down. I'm a sensitive little soul. So I went back to my apartment one day. And I was shaving my beard. And I thought, you know what, I'm doing it. I'm joining the club. I'm going to shave the legs. So I shaved a leg, and only when I shaved one leg did I realize the massive mistake, the horror of what I looked down upon, right? One leg shaved. But of course, then you've got to do a second one, haven't you? You can't just leave it. You can't just leave one leg shaved. That would just be weird. That would just be weird. So anyway, there you go. Hi, Mike. Love from York. Thoughts on Usyk versus Fury. There you go. Uh, very much looking forward to Usyk versus Fury. Um, I'm kind of... 
I'm kind of leaning towards Alexander Usyk. I mean, maybe it was just because, maybe it's because of Tyson Fury's pretty poor showing against Francis Ngannou. And I'm not talking taking away from Ngannou there. You know, Ngannou was, uh, he was brilliant. He was brilliant. He shocked the world. Certainly dropping Fury, going the distance, looking as sharp and composed and as effective as he was. But I also just thought, I just unsubscribed. Well, thanks, James Barrett. Fuck off on your way out. Slam the door on your way out. Um, I also think Tyson Fury probably didn't take him seriously. All right, so here we go. Who have we got on here? It is Arthur Baggy versus Joshua Roda. We've got a good little scrap on our hands here, boys and girls. So, yeah, so I, I think based upon that, I think Alexander Usyk probably beats Tyson Fury. Now, maybe that's just recency bias in terms of Tyson's last fight. Maybe it's just that. You know what I mean? Uh, and I hope I hope Fury shows up. I really do, because a prime Tyson Fury of what I think he's capable of probably beats Alexander Usyk. But again, his dip, stock has dipped in my mind based upon that last fight. Anyway, Evan B says, hey, Mike, I was that kid that trolled you on the last stream and I just want to apologise because I felt so terrible. I trolled you with Barry McCockina. You didn't troll me, buddy. I was well aware of what was going on and I was playing along. But thank you very much for the heartfelt apology. Bispin, what's your favourite strike submission to use in a fight? The one that wins, the one that gets the knockout, the one that gets the tap out. But generally, jab, right hand, left head kick. That was always one of my favourite combinations. I throw it a lot still on the bag today. It just seems to come naturally to me. Anyway, should we have a look at this? Right. The sumo is class, Bispin. Next, next fighter will have a Veruca sock. <laughs> Best of Great Britain in the house. One leg shave, you're a lovable dick at times. Burnley talk for you Americans. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. I shaved one fucking leg. I shaved the other one as well straight away. I was like, this is ridiculous. Rebecca or Laura? Well, of course, I'm going to say my wife, Anna, the woman that can hear me through that room. Uh, over a work colleague, you bloody idiots. My favorite submission is what my girlfriend does to me. Don't want to know about that, buddy. I do not want to know what your girlfriend does. I'm sure you enjoy it, though. <sighs> Mike is the best, second best, says Uncle Chael. So why did the fighters shave their legs? Because they were bullied into it. So someone says here, should Tom Aspinall defend the interim title? And my answer to that is, yes, it should be. He should. He should defend that because... I don't think he's going to get to fight Stipe or John anytime soon. I've been through this many times, so if you've heard this already, I apologise. He ain't going to get to, uh, uh, to fight John or Stipe anytime soon. It's going to be a while. He's in his prime. He's almost 30 years old. Um, yeah, he's about 30, I think, so he's fully in his prime. Stay active, keep training, keep earning money, keep generating legacy, and then just be even better when you do finally get a chance to fight Stipe or John Jones, if indeed that does ever even materialise, because you never know. How many sumos do you reckon you can bench? Let's have a look at these ones. Well, 380 pounds. I can't bench that fella. What was the other one, 280? I could bench 280. Not many times. I do it once. I'm not the strongest guy. You know, when I lift weights, I was never particularly strong, but when I grab a bastard... I'm pretty strong like that. So functional strength, I'm pretty good. But lifting weights, I was never I was never impressive in the weight room, guys. Yeah, no. But that doesn't matter. As long as I can win a fight, that's all that does matter. This guy looks like he's in shape, though. He looks like a big, strong dude. I'm assuming he's the one that's not 380. I'll tell you what, though. That other guy. Jesus, look at this guy. He's jacked. Look at the size of him. So that's 380 pounds for you there. No, he doesn't look that jacked there. See, it's the lighting. He, I don't know, actually. He looks like a proper barbarian. He looks like a nasty piece of work. He looks like you could, he could rip your head off and shit down your throat if you wanted to. That's a gorilla of a man right there. My God. I'm kind of intrigued. I don't fancy the white diaper. I don't fancy his chances much. He's nodding. Will there be a tail's... From the Octagon 3. 
one and two were amazing and I would be buzzing for a third instalment. Well, who said that? Daryl, yeah, mate. Uh, I hope so. I hope so. You know, it, they were a great success from my perspective. The crowd loved it. They were really, really busy. There was a lot of people showed up. The problem was with the second one. All right, here we go. I mean, he looks massive, him, doesn't he? I don't think White's got much of a chance here. I really don't. Let's have a look. Three, two. Should we have a bit? Of, should we have a bit of sound? Let's have a bit of sound. Oh. 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 You can't judge a book by its cover. I mean, I was talking out my ass. I said he had no chance. I said he had no chance. A lot of technical terms there on display that I don't know. He was good. Just go, shows, it does. Don't judge a book by its cover. Never. Yeah, is this round two? It is, it's round two. Should we have a listen? Oh, they've hit the deck. Upset, complete for Brennan Moorfield. He's heading to the next round. That's it. That's all she wrote, guys. It's exciting stuff. Um, so, I said, don't judge a book by its cover. I was like, that guy stands no chance. Obviously, there's a lot of technique in this sumo stuff as well. It's not just a case of running at your opponent and pushing them. Who would have thought? What was I talking about? Tales from the Octagon. Yeah, so I hope there is. I hope there is. Uh, the problem was, is that I think on the first show in Manchester, there was like 3,500 people. There wasn't quite as many for this one, although there were still thousands. Um, but I think people were confused that it was going to be a completely new show. I think a lot of people thought it was going to be the same thing. That's what people told me. They went, wow, this is amazing. I thought it was going to be the same thing. I'm like, well, it got Tom Aspinall and Paul Craig. How can it possibly be the same thing? I guess the people that came aren't the smartest. And if you were there, I apologize. Let's go, Sumo. Right, great work, Harry. But that did look like Harrington. It did. It really did. Should we have a look at what's going on in the world of MMA in the MMA news section? No, we won't. We won't. We'll keep it on the Sumo. Uh, you got any good questions for me, though? Takeshire will take the rope this year. Mike, pride rules. Would you punch somebody in the nuts to escape a submission? Well, if you remember last time, I said last time, in the early days of the UFC, you could. You could punch people in the, in the groin. No problem. Uh, would I do it if it was legal in the rules? Of course I would. If you were in... Oh, if you wouldn't get disqualified for it, then why wouldn't you? If that is a legal manoeuvre, 100% do it by all accounts. You've got to do whatever you can. You know what I mean? If someone's chalking you out, then uh, punch him in the balls. Why not? UFC 300 main event announced. Bisping versus Leon. Uh, okay. Did I, did I see the Roadhouse trailer? I did. I did see the Roadhouse trailer. Uh, do you know what it looked like? It looked very similar to the first Roadhouse. It didn't look any different at all, to be quite frank. It looked like the exact same film. Obviously, Conor McGregor's in it and Jake Gyllenhaal, but the premise is still exactly the same. And of course, it's a remake. But they showed a scene in the hospital, which was very similar to the scene where Patrick Swayze met his love interest in the first one. I was like... Literally a remake. Uh, but except Conor McGregor's in it. I saw some comments on Twitter, because obviously on... Uh, on the trailer, he's in the bar. Oh, we had a smashing time, and I think he's like a baseball bat or something. Somebody said, they missed the trick not having him use a dolly to smash that up, which I thought was pretty funny. Mike, I'm loving the look in the glasses. One of the sexiest fighters in UFC history. Well, thank you, DD. That's very kind of you. Mike, I'm a commentating UFC 300. I'm not commentating by the cage, you know, you know, regular commentary, but I will be working for ESPN, so I'll be working the desk as an analyst. So I'm uh, very, very much looking forward to it. UFC 300 is an incredible fight card. The monkey says, I've kickboxing fight. What's the best combo to try? I'm assuming English isn't your first language, the monkey. I've kickboxing fight. I've kickboxing fight. What's the best combo to try? Um, the one that works. I don't know what you're capable of, bud. Superman punch, spinning back kick into a flying knee. It's always a good one for me. Just stick to the basics, mate. Do a Sean Strickland. Jab, right hand. Boom, can't go wrong. Roydhouse. <laughs> it's a good one, the real sweet tea. 
Yeah, so anyway, listen, fair play to McGregor, you know. Did well, he looked good, looked good. First acting role, you know what I mean? And considering it was his third, first thing and he's not a classically trained actor, he didn't do bad at all. I mean, I haven't seen the film, of course. Mike, we need your commentary. When you did Fury and Garnu, it was epic. All right, okay. All right, let's have it. We're doing it. It's not quite Tyson Fury versus uh, Francis Ngannou, but right now we've got green shorts. Hold on, who is it? Camille Basira going up against Jim Gramer. There's a stone cold look in the eye. And I tell you what, America's Jim Gramer looked half asleep there. Right, they're kicking, they're kicking the shit off the feet. He's having his last wipe of saliva from his mouth, scratch of the balls, and down they go. Are we ready? And a three, two, one. Bring it on, come on. In our final opening round of the night, Kimo eats a shot upstairs. I poke. I is bloody Israel Adesanya. What's he doing in there? No man alive should be poking someone's eye in a sumo match. All right, okay. This is just stupid, isn't it? What am I doing? What am I doing? Making a fool out of myself to... Not too many of you tonight, thank God. I'm going to turn the commentary off because then you can hear me better. Um, Big John Fury versus Mark Hunt. I would actually like... To oh, look at that. I don't know the rules. I don't know who won that, but it seemed like uh, old... Big Belly Barry with the green on. Um, just face-planted, headbutted the canvas. Do you think they will make 265? I don't think so, bro. What's going on here? What have I done? What have I done? I've got green lines on the stream. There we go. There we go. All right, Big Belly Barry. He's up again. He's pushing. There it is. That's it. Listen, guys, don't get it twisted. That is very, very technical shit they're doing right there. That maneuver, that takes thousands of years to learn. The rich, but there it is, sign of respect. The rich history of sumo. Okay, man, these are trained. You think learning jujitsu is tough? Pushing forward like that in such an aggressive manner is not easy. I'm joking, by the way, of course. You won't want to get on the wrong side of them, though. Down a dark alley. What do I think of what John Anik said? Thank you, Naz, uh, Raz, Nimrodi. That's a good question. I appreciate that. So for those people that don't know, and I'm going to be paraphrasing here. We'll go back to the next match in a minute of the, of the International Club Sumo. International Sumo League Club Sumo. This is going down live from New York. Um, so John Anik... Again, I'm paraphrasing. Something along the lines of he's on the podcast. Obviously, he put forward his opinion that he thought Drickus Duplessis won the fight and that the judges made the correct call. Uh, and I'm assuming, because I, I haven't looked at the comments, but I'm assuming that in his comment section of the podcast, there was a lot of hatred. There was a lot of shit talk and a lot of nasty things get said because John Anik said... He's basically, he's not sure how much longer he can continue doing this. With the amount of hatred that is coming from some of the fans, he doesn't know how much longer he can do this. And the reality is, and I feel for John, because let me tell you right now, John Anik is one of the nicest guys. He's an absolute class act. He's a credit to this sport. He's such a professional. He pays the fighters so much respect. He really does. And he's incredible at his job, right? He's incredible at his job. But um, as the sport grows, as more eyeballs are upon it, um, you're going to get good and bad. Simple as that. You're going to get good and bad, just like these sumo wrestlers. I mean, look at the biggest sport on planet Earth, football. And I ain't talking none of that NFL garbage. I'm talking real football. Some of you might call it soccer. But you kick a ball with your foot, so we call it football. That's the biggest sport on planet Earth by far. And some of the Ameri some of the football fans are disgusted. Right? Some of the behavior that has always gone on in that sport. I mean, for, for decades, you know, the hooliganism, the violence. It's inspired many movies. 
One of my favourites, Football Factory. Great film. If you haven't seen Football Factory, it's on Netflix. Check that out. It's a great, funny film. Um, you know, there's a lot of racism from the fans. In fact, just at the moment, I saw on the news this morning, there's a an inquiry or something going on. Some of the players walked off the pitch. I forget what team it was because one of the black players, a lot of the crowd, they were making monkey noises and stuff like that. So what I'm saying is, disgusting fans in football, you know, as the sport gets bigger, you're always going to get good and bad, you know. So I don't think my advice to John would be ignore them, you know. It's easy for me to say, of course, you know, I'm not the guy on the receiving end, although I am on the receiving end of a lot of shit. A lot of shit, you know what I mean? You say one thing that people don't agree with online, like you guys here in the chat, NFL garbage, blasphemy, Bisping. I didn't say NFL garbage. I meant, you know, I like football. I'm just not really a big fan. Um, there's good and bad. There's good and bad. Pinky Saurus Rex. Babe, we got a new member. You got a woo from the background, from the kitchen. Rogan and Bisping are the best commentators. Well, that's very kind, Colby. Thank you very much. So, yeah, th th there's good and bad. You just got to try and block it out. In the words of Happy Gilmore, harness the good energy, block the bad. That's all you got to do. Harness the good, block the bad. Uh, right, so who says that? Jack Donner here. You've never seen Football Factory, but Green Street is gold. Let me tell you, brother, Green Street isn't worth the tape that it is printed on, filmed on. It's not, it's, it, it ain't worth a wank compared to Football Factory. Football Factory is leaps and bounds ahead of uh, Green Street. Not that Green Street's a bad film. It's not, it's a decent film. But Football Factory's hilarious. Very, very funny. Bloody Palms. I guess that's racist too. No, it's not. It's not racist at all. Nothing racist about that. Oh, well, Pinky Soros Rex gifted me five Michael Bisping memberships. Thank you, Pinky Soros Rex. What does that mean that you gave me five memberships? I don't need a membership. It's my channel. I'm shit at YouTube. <laughs> I am. I'm good at sitting here and talking bollocks and I'm good at doing the videos and analysing and giving my thoughts and all the rest of it, but my editor in the background, John Brannigan, he's an expert at this stuff. This is his life and I'm sure I drive him up the wall. And the guy that I used to work with, Anthony Evans, good mate of mine, uh, I'm sure I drive him up the wall as well because they talk in bloody acronyms, you know, and, and they talk all about the bloody... The RPMs and the CPMs and the this. I didn't even know what a fucking thumbnail was until three weeks ago. So, yeah. Anyway, got a proper question in here. Young Master Doba says, I saw you in the show Warrior and I got excited. But then you got beaten faster than McGregor versus Aldo. I got to ask you, what's your favorite film show you've ever done? Well, thank you, Young Master Doba. Appreciate that, bud. So, yeah, um... I'm working hard on the acting side of things at the minute. I've just uh, did a couple of auditions. I've got another one to do. Uh, some Matthew Addison. Am I going to do any more acting? Yeah, for sure. I've got two films coming out this year. I sound like rat. That's why I don't talk about this stuff because I detest myself just for even saying. So I've got two films coming out this year. I sound like a wanker, uh, but I do. Red Sonja and Den of Thieves too. Two really really good shows. Warrior was amazing. It, it, I was really proud to be a part of that. Warrior is a Bruce Lee project. I think he wrote it before he passed away, obviously. Um, and it was produced by his daughter. Uh, and yeah, so it was, it was great to be a part of it. It really was. And I'm very proud of the work that I did. The fight scenes were fantastic. And just getting to film in South Africa and with the people that I worked with, it was a great experience. And it came out really good. But I think Red Sonja, that's my biggest part yet. That comes out um, later this year. And you're right. Slurpy Bean says Red Sonja, the original, was a classic. And it was. Because when I was younger, I used to watch Red Sonja so many times. Over and over again. I guess we'll come back to this when we have some actual bloody sumo going on. Yeah, I used to watch Red Sonja all the time. So it was nice to be in the, um, the remake. Great cast, met some great people on there, and I've got a good role. Uh, I've got a good, good role in that one. So looking forward to it, see how it comes out. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what the future holds. You know what I mean? It's hard to land acting roles, believe it or not. You know, but I do enjoy doing it because I think for me, obviously, I was a fighter for a long time, which I enjoyed. And that's hard. There's a struggle. You have to work towards it. You're getting better at something, you know, and you 
scratching and clawing your way to the top and you lose one and you fall down in the rankings, but then you got to get better. you got to make some tweaks. you got to look at how you're preparing for fights and change certain things. So it's exciting. You know, one of the best parts of it was getting an opponent, getting that email from the UFC and then sitting down with my team, my coaches, formulating a plan, you know, and then training, and then me and my boys getting on a plane, flying to the other side of the world. That's exciting shit, man. Uh, and I don't have that excitement in my life anymore. Of course, I love commentating the UFC. I love it. I absolutely love it. So I'm so happy to be involved with the sport. But the excitement of still trying to like land a little acting role here and there and then flying off somewhere, completely new surroundings, not knowing anybody, and then obviously the challenge of actually doing the job as well. Yeah, so, so that, that, that brings a bit of excitement because my wife says to me, why, why do you do that shit? And I'm like, well, I do. I'm, I, it's, it's exciting. I'm passionate about it and I do enjoy it. It's a great, great feeling being on set. Anyway, let's get back to the stuff that I do know about. L.M. Mayo, welcome to The Contender. Uh, you are a believer. So, right, what the fat is this? Jesus Christ, there's no need to body shame people. When am I commentating again? Buzzards cry. I will be back in action. I don't know if I'm speaking out of turn here. Um, I don't think it's a big secret. UFC 298, the pay-per-view. Alexander Volkanovsky versus um, Ilya Taporia. I'm commentating that fight. That will be my next one. Oh, the week before that, I'll be commentating Power Slap as well. So yeah, looking forward to both of those. Of course, working with Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan's the man when it comes to mixed martial arts commentary. He essentially invented the job and he's fantastic at what he does. So yeah, that's going to be great. When will Anthony Smith be in commentary? Well, when I get fired, maybe. <laughs> Until then, he ain't having my job. Mike, who do I think the big UFC 300 headliner will be? Yeah, see, that's a really good question. Uh, I don't know. It seems like from what Tom Aspinall said, because Tom says that they offered him Stipe Miocic, he said that he accepted, but then apparently Stipe didn't. And he said that the date was April 13th, so Stipe, Tom Aspinall, maybe is what they were thinking, going off what Tom said. Um, Izzy versus Drickus Duplessis Leon versus Bilal Magomed Ankalaev versus um, um, Alex Pereira pardon me 18 months member here Terry Bailey come on champ shout out my friend I need to see more 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 you need to see more there you go there ain't nothing popping off on the Combat Sumo League. Uh, all right, question. How do you overcome the mental shock of realizing and feeling somebody is stronger than you in a fight and one shot could end you? See, that's a really good question, Gabriel. That's a good question. I like that one. Uh, yeah, I'll be honest. I never really experienced that feeling of being overpowered often. It definitely happened when I fought Matt Hamill. When I fought Matt Hamill, I was like, Jesus Christ, this man's like an ox. It was ridiculous. He, he, but, you know, other than that, I can honestly, I don't think I ever experienced, like, when we grabbed hold of one another and he was just overpowering me. Because sometimes people in the gym that are bigger than your heavyweights or whatever, you're like, shit, you can't move. Um, but yeah, I never really struggled in that department. Uh, there were certainly a few times where I got clocked and I was like, whoa, shit. That wasn't good. Don't want to take too many more of them. You know, there's a lot of fights where you're critical of yourself because you never push the pace like you, you, you wanted to, you know. And certainly fans go, why weren't you throwing more? And I say, why weren't I throwing more? But then you think back and you remember. Oh, shit, yeah, I remember why. Because every time I went forward, I could feel the wind of the punch just missing my face. And... Uh, because you forget about that when you watch it back and you're like, why didn't I push more? It's like, oh shit, yeah, that was why. That was why, because there's real risks attached to pushing the pace. Guys, you need to make Snatch too. And from your skit with Hassan, you should be in that film. Damn right, Godspeed. Jack Sparrow, I would love to be in Snatch too. Snatch is one of my favorite films. Absolutely fantastic. I would love to work with Guy Ritchie. 
What a legend of a director. Big, big MMA fan. Jiu-Jitsu black belt. Supposed to be legit as well. One of my good friends who's an actor and a Jiu-Jitsu competitor is his coach. And he says, listen, he's, he's legit. He ain't no celebrity black belt. So yeah, snatch two, man. But you kind of got to leave it alone. Lockstock. Lockstock. What a legendary film. Snatch and Lockstock. They are the two of my favorites, man. He kind of started that whole genre. Um... But you, you kind of got to leave Snatch alone. It's one of those. You can't mess with it. I guarantee some asshole is going to remake it in about 15 years and totally butcher it. But, um, yeah, you can't do a Snatch 2. Leave that. That's gold. That's a masterpiece of a film, if you ask me. And so is Lockstock. Hi, Michael. What would like to lose... What was it like to lose a split decision to Rashad Evans? You've never seen Snatched. you got to watch it, bro. Sean, 3-2. Uh, you're wrong, bro. You can't leave that Snatch alone. Oh, my God. As if I said that. Leave Snatch alone. Oh, my God. We still haven't got much sumo action going on. Oh, the dog's coming to join me. Should we have a look at the dog? Lockstock was a legend. Yeah, you got to leave Snatch alone. You can't leave that Snatch alone. Oh, bloody hell. What an idiot. You're going to play a longer role in Den of Thieves 2? Yeah, I did. I did, yeah. Not a massive part. Not a massive part, but uh, compared to the first one, yeah. Uh, a significant part. I have, I have some pretty decent scenes at the beginning. Uh, can't spoil it. Can't talk about the film, of course. Has it even been released? And yes, Bisping next for James Bond. That would be fantastic. Even just a bad guy. Just make me a bad guy in James Bond. You know. Vinnie Jones was a footballer turned successful actor. Do I like him? I do. And believe it or not, you know, when you see guys like, and Vinnie Jones is a great example, because, you know, obviously, talking about the acting stuff, which we are, you know, when you see somebody like Vinnie Jones going from the acting, uh, sorry, from the football world to the acting world and making a success of it, you think, oh, I can do that. Snatch, Lockstock, um, Jason Statham, he's the best example ever. He was an Olympic level diver wasn't an actor, and now look at him, one of the biggest movie stars on the goddamn planet, yeah. But that is enough of this, because you're not here to hear me talk about this fucking bullshit, yeah? We want to watch the this homo, so that's what we're going to watch. No, we're not. Kenny White can get fucked. Uh, sorry, Kenny, I don't know who you are. I'm sure you're a lovely guy. Uh, fight Strickland. I used to fight Strickland. I've fought Strickland many, many times. I used to train with him. People always say that, oh, why don't you mention that again? Um, well, I did. I trained with him a lot because we lived in the same area. I'm in Orange County, California. He's from Corona, just down the street. So, yeah, we'd often be at the same gyms down at Mark Munoz's place. We used to spar. You know, I'll tell you a funny story about uh, Sean Strickland because he's a cocky fucker, as am I, so that's not an insult. Um, I remember, so Lorenz Larkin, who was a brilliant fighter, Still is a brilliant fighter party. He's not dead. Uh, but he used to fight in the UFC. And then he went over to Bellator. Uh, Lorenz, when he was on, man, he was just phenomenal. So anyway, I went to the Inland Empire, which is the next county over from where I live. I'm in Orange County, Inland Empire. Anyway, so I went up there to train with Lorenz Larkin, get some sparring in. I had a fight coming up. And I'm up there, and uh, I do a few rounds with Lorenz. And then when I'm done... There's this young kid there with a shaved head. Kind of looked like me when I was younger. Cocky as hell, but an American virgin. Hey, here's the thing, man. He says, you want to get a few rounds? I said, yeah, well, I've just sparred. I said, we'll do a couple of rounds, whatever. So we sparred maybe a round. I don't know how long we did. Probably a round, whatever. We did five minutes. And he was pretty good. He was pretty good. I didn't think he would be. I thought it'd be a lot of shit. They didn't know the guy. He wasn't in the UFC. Uh, and that was Sean Strickland. And when we finished sparring, <laughs> it was pretty funny. Because he did all right. He didn't whoop my ass. I didn't whoop his ass. If you had to score the sparring, I won the sparring. But he was, he was effective. He was hard to hit. He always was. Do you know what I mean? He's, very, he's got a very unique style. Uh, and then anyway, point of the story. When he finishes, when we finish sparring, because he knows that secretly I thought he did good. You know what I mean? He goes, hey, I'm even better on the ground. <laughs> I'm even better on the ground. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, yeah. As if to say, you're surprised at how good I was on the feet. I'm even better on the ground. 
So fair play. And good, good for him, man. He's had tremendous success. He's worked his ass off. Nothing was ever given to Sean. You know what I mean? He earned that. And you've got to respect that journey. You do. Regardless of what all these people want to write about what he says. And listen, a lot of shit he says is very controversial. You know? And some people, I guess if you look at it from a certain lens, it's offensive. You know what I mean? But, you know, sticks and stones and all that jazz. If you look at what he achieved through hard work, determination, and just a bloody work ethic, you've got to respect that. You've got to respect that. Anyway, enough of that. His biggest win is roasting those Canuck journalists. Yeah, well, he did. That was a good one. Who's the cardio machine how to use, Mike? I was known for the cardio. Thoughts on Michael Venom Page moving to the UFC? I'm intrigued, man. I'm intrigued. I'm a massive fan. Oh, what's going on here? Hold on. Should we have a listen? Let's have a little listen. It looks like we've got a big announcement. Osuna Arashi. Osuna Arashi, fun fact, actually has one pro MMA fight with Ryzen in 2018. I don't think Bruce Buffer needs to worry about his job anytime soon. This guy did pretty good last time. Oh, so it's like a knockout tournament. It's a tournament format. I see. Right, I'm going to kill the commentary because it's a bit of a buzzkill. I can't really talk to you guys. I think his missus is trying to tell him something. Get off your stalker. Anyway. Wait a minute. These aren't legit sumos. What makes you a legit sumo? I love you. What makes you a legit sumo? Being Japanese. That's bloody racist. Can't see. Whoa, 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 whoa. Xenophobic at best. Uh, he's a good example of struggling young men in many ways. By his actions, not his words, definitely. Yeah. You're right. You're right. How do you gain muscle and be ripped without steroids? Buzzards cry. Um, very, very easy, mate. It all. I mean, obviously, if you're still in your prime, if you're still young, having a healthy diet and lifting weights and working out. All right, we've got the pre-fight stretch. Here we go. The stepping up to the plate, up to the gauntlet, down to the knees. I couldn't even do that. Yeah, you, you got to lift lift weights. Buzzards cry. You know, and if you're anyone on here is getting older, you've got to lift weights every single day, bro. Ooh, there's a lot of impact there from Rosada. Gets him out one foot and then pushed him away. That was a little bit bitchy, weren't it? No need for that. Bad sportsmanship there. Oh, he's not happy. Let's have a listen to the sound. Right. Yeah. Gwen, walk me through this replay. So Sandstrom Boom. did a good job of getting these double unders and immediately Battle grabbed his rhythm and washed it. But before he even gets it, uh, he made Rosada step out. So he did a good Forced him out. That's that. That's that. Round two. Here we go. I'm feeling like Rosada. He's going to get it. Let's listen to the commentary. And then they go in Sankia. This is the fault of Sankia, people. A big part of the Japanese tradition for sumo wrestling. Yes. Big part of the Japanese tradition. Rosado trying to stay in this tournament tonight. Let's go. Sandstorm gets going with a massive slap upstairs. That's it. Rosado Easy. Out of it tonight, Madison. That's that, that's that, that's that. You know, it's kind of fun to see these big, massive, powerful men like that, you know, but it just it just it just ends a little bit quickly for me. But it is fun though. I'd like to go to one live. That'd probably be fun. It's like two walruses in thongs. He was a monster in Japan. Was he sensei, Seth? I think he pushed him out because of a headbutt. No need for cardio there. You'd be surprised. So anyway, you want to get ripped, you gotta lift weights. You don't have to take steroids. Of course you don't. Far from it. Uh, but if you're getting older, anybody on here that is getting older, I'm going to give you a bit of advice. you got to lift weights, guys. Every year you age, they say you lose 3% of your muscle mass. So if you're not maintaining it, if you're not lifting weights, you're going to lose it. And then by the time you're an older man, you're going to look like a used tea bag. You know what I'm saying? So you got to bloody, you got to get on that lifting. 
And if you're getting older, get on the good stuff as well. Who gives a fuck? Go see your doctor. Get some testosterone replacement therapy or something. You know what I mean? Cardio is super important too. No, it will be. It will be. Alexa Grasso will finish her trilogy and then have to jump straight up into a tough matchup with Dixie Normus. <sighs> Devil's Avocado. I've never heard of Dixie Normus. But that's a good one. I like it. I like it. I like it. Didn't start lifting till 65. Well, night shift New York City. If that is correct, congratulations to you. 65 years old. Never too old to change your life. Is this as good as slap? And is TRT okay for a normal guy? No man alive can like it. The sumo wrestling. To power slap. No, it's not. It's not. Power slap's a shit, man. It's fucking very, very exciting. And this is great. This is great. I'm not slagging it off. I'm not knocking it at all. But it's. I'm a power slap guy. Let's have a listen to the interview. Let's have a listen. Don't have any either. But we love having you, and I'm excited to keep watching you. Congratulations again. The sandstorm breezes on, and he sounds like a maniac. The sandstorm. I like that. That's a good name. Um, all right. So, Pinky Soros Rex. Gifted me five more memberships. Thank you, Pinky Soros Rex. Do you love my John Fury? Does it even sound like John Fury? It really doesn't. This is real martial arts. It is Mac R1. Sumo is technically a martial art, okay? Sumo is fun. They just need to decrease the time in between rounds. You're absolutely right. There's too much, too much filler. They got to keep it moving along nicely. Yeah, you're right. It is interesting to see it. Um, but yeah, they're going to move it along. I guess it's just organisation. I think it's the first ever event, so who knows. Smoke George Harrison cigarettes to sound like fury. Okay. Jack Penis. <laughs> Jack Penis, you dickhead. Um, Rebecca, come here a second. Or make the circle bigger to make it last longer. You're right, scumbag. That's what I was going to say. I think if they made the sumo circle bigger... Because the problem is, I mean, they've only got to push him back two or three steps. I'm assuming that this is a traditional size sumo ring. You know what I mean? Just just hold the stream for me one second. I'm just going to use the toilet. I'm bursting. I'm bur Rebecca's here. Play nice, guys. Do not, do not. Comment on the, the sumo wrestling beds. Um, okay. Oh, let me put the headphones in. All righty. Sumo wrestlers. Hi, Lou J. I can't hear anything anyway. Oh, all right. <laughs> I was like, I cannot hear a thing. These are garbage headphones. Um, bring Harry. Harry, come here. No one alive should be slagging off my headphones. Come here. They're like the free ones you get on an aeroplane. They are free ones you get on an aeroplane. <laughs> um, all righty. So, Rebecca, who's in better shape? Mike or the sumo guys? Ooh. Let's put on a few pounds lately. You're a cheap bitch. <gasps> Did you hear what he just said? No, he's in great shape. Um, yes, yeah, happy Australia Day. I had no idea. I feel ashamed. I forgot it was Australia Day. I've been out of Australia way too long. Way too long. I think I need to go back for a little visit. Get reacquainted with Australia. Uh, Harry's well fed. I don't know. He's, he's like fluffy. So he's actually pretty skinny. But... Um, he doesn't eat that much. He's not like a foodie dog. <laughs> uh, is Harry the best dog? Who's doing the polls? Oh. Anyway, of course Harry's the best dog. Harry. Uh, Jared Whitler says, hi, Harry. All right. What do we think of these sumo guys, babe? Um, I haven't really looked If you yet, had to pick a winner right now, go on. Who's going to win? Uh, the guy on the... I th Right. Okay, so the white sash, <laughs> so to speak. I don't know what I'm basing that on. Well, you know what? You'd be right because he demolished the last guy who was about three times his size. Oh, we might have met his match though. We got a real tournament now. This is two big, strong boys. It's a nice shot of his ass crack. Why do they wear that? What do you call it? It's tradition, babe. Yeah, but what's the reason? A nappy sack. There must be oh, a oh, oh, see, so this is where the cardio comes in. And this is a good match, though. This is the best one they've had so far. Goes for a little inside trip. Because, because he went for that inside trip, he went off balance on one leg. So the guy in the green was able to use his 
torque and so his momentum. That's it. Well, no, round one is done, though. Oh. Look, look, he goes for a, watch him. He goes for the trip there. Off balance, boom, down he goes. How many rounds is there? Best of three, so if you win two, I think that's it. That's what it's been so far. I'm just picking up on the uh, the patterns. Patterns are forming. Mm -hmm. Shall I have my seat back? Yeah. All right, I'll let you get out and I'll see. I'll get back to dinner. What are we on? Oh, see, I'm, I'm not doing the full thing that I said I was going to do. I'm doing chicken thighs with roast potatoes and carrots. That's it. No gravy. I want, the no. Gra I want gravy. Yeah, but the, the way I'm doing the chicken gravy won't go with it. Oh, for, how are you doing the chicken? It's in a marinade. Oh, what kind of marinade? You'd be disappointed if there's no gravy. Uh, well, I mean, I, was, I had my heart set on some gravy. <laughs> Do I have to make No gravy? man alive should be eating roast chicken with no gravy. I'm not saying no man alive. Say it, just say it. Go on. No. Give it a no man alive. No. Just do it. No. Say it. No. All right. Oh, yeah, I've been saying I should do gravy. You should do gravy. Get that gravy. Gravy is a whole thing. I don't use gravy granules. It's a monster movie. You two watching Melting Hippos. Be respectful. These guys are trying to bloody... Uh, athlete. These are athletes. Can I have my yes, seat back? Yes, yes, sorry. I was just having a little rest. Yeah, I know. Oh. Don't worry, the main attraction's coming back. That was a good little match, though. I'm actually very intrigued for round two of this one. That was a good one. Got a couple of good super chats up here. Let's have a look at what we got. Uh, Ruben Saucedo says, one of the best Bisping. Thank you very much. Who do you think would win Volk versus Taporia? Your personal opinion. Um, well, as I said a moment ago, I'm actually commentating that fight, so it would be very unprofessional of me to actually predict a winner in that fight. However, I do think it's a really compelling matchup. You've got Volkanovski, who's just phenomenal at every aspect of mixed martial arts. I mean, his submissions are great. His submission defense, his takedown defense, he's got good wrestling, he's got fantastic striking, he really does. Gas tank for days. Um, and Taporia, same thing, undefeated. Now, I do think Taporia is possibly catching him. My neck's kill him. Possibly catching him at a good time because uh, Volkanovski, as we know, suffered his first knockout. Suffered his knockout at the hands of Islam Makachev with that head kick. So that tells you that he's human. When you're essentially undefeated, I know he'd lost one fight before, but when you're essentially undefeated, you think you're invincible. But now he's had that drilled into him, forced into him by a shin on chin. That he's not, that he's only human. Now that could do two things. It, one, it could diminish him as a fighter, or it could motivate him to come back even stronger. It's all down to the individual. It's all, goes, it's all what goes on between the, between the years. It really is. You know, it's, it's a fascinating sport. I heard Vitor loves Imagine Dragons. I imagine Dragon is piss sampled to a real drug test. We love you guys. Thank you, Jack, Jack Sparrow. Yeah, imagine that. It would, the, the, the fucking... The lab would explode. Uh, Volkanovski is still a pit bull. He is. No, no, no. Not. I am not in any way, shape or form underestimating Volkanovski. I'm just pointing out potential eventualities. You know? Because the reality is, look, listen, you know, who knows? Maybe it's a good time to get him. Statistically, you would say it is. If you're going to fight someone, if you're going to fight one of the best fighters on the world, would you want to fight him when he's never been beaten in God knows how many years it was? Or would you want to fight him when his last fight he got knocked out unconscious? You'd probably choose the time he got after getting knocked out unconscious. That is in no way, shape or form discrediting the ability or the danger of fighting an Alexander Volkanovsky. But it's, it's a fact. By the way, I did an interview with Volk on this channel. If you haven't seen it, check it out. I did it, what, last week or a week before? About 10 days ago, I think. Um, so yeah, look, check out that. He says that he went into that fight against, um, pardon me, against Makachev. He said when he got the call, he'd been drinking and stuff like that. And he said he really hates himself because normally he's not the type to be drinking and partying a little bit. He's just not that guy. But he had been. He'd had surgery, he'd allowed himself to get a little out of shape, a little sloppy and all the rest of it. But he thought he was going to go out there and knock him out. That was the plan. That was the approach. 
And as we know, that isn't what happened. All right, we've got some action, I think, going on in the sumo. Yeah, here we go. Let's have a look. I think we should run a poll. These are getting more competitive now. The, the first round, we saw a lot of people just getting thrown out of the ring. Now it's kind of heating up and spicing up. These matches are more interesting. They were mismatches the first round, but this again, look, this has gone on for a while. There it is, he's down and he's out. Well done. Well done. All right. See, the longer matches, they are fun, actually. I do enjoy them. It's kind of interesting to see. It is a form of wrestling. I don't know what you call the thing around the waist. Did anyone know? He didn't get knocked out unconscious. Well aimed, dog. Fucking hell, Mr. Pedantic. He got knocked out, pretty much. He got technically knocked out. There you go. You know what I'm saying. You don't have to criticise or critique every word out of my mouth. Can you imitate John Fury and Yoel Romero's voice and act like they are talking to each other? I love you. You love me? I do. Why you love me? Because I love you. No man alive should love me. There you go. <laughs> it's a weird request, but I did it. Since Sharub the Bateen showed up, they should never stop a fight because an eye is compromised again. Well, Pinky Saurus Rex. Um, I disagree. I disagree. Obviously, for those people that don't know the situation, Sharub Bateen, I don't, know, I don't know the last name, is a fighter that has one eye. He competed in Abu Dhabi last year. Um, and I, of course, competed with one eye. But when you get poked in the eye, it's not only... No, oh, fair play to Soslan Gagliov. Um, it's not only a, a vision thing, it's a pain thing. You all know, if you get poked in the eye, it's bloody horrible. Yes, you can't see, but the pain's ridiculous. So there's that side of it as well. And then also, of course, if you are disabled with one eye, if one eye is taken out mid-fire because you're poked in the eye or whatever the case may be, you've got to adapt in that moment right then and there. Developing a fight style and learning to fight with one eye is difficult and it takes time. That's why when I came back with my first fight after a detached retina, I lost to Tim Kennedy. He beat me fair and square, so I'm not taking away from him. But that was my first fight back. It took me a while to figure out how to do it. Just that clip again. Verdun versus Ferguson, verbally. Verdun versus Ferguson, verbally. I don't get it. I love you, mate. You're my hero. Well, thank you. I wouldn't think that standing on, sitting here watching sumo wrestling, doing stupid impressions of John Fury, when it doesn't even sound like John Fury, I just like saying, no man alive. Uh, depth perception, there you go, at LM Mayo. That's the one. Brian William Smith, you could call it excuses, and it is, a, is an excuse, but it's also a fact, brother. You can say whatever you like, but that is a fact. That's what I look like waiting for the UFC to start flexing with my gut out. As I say, as it's getting to the next few rounds, this is getting a bit more interesting, isn't it? Bisping, your commentary has grown on me and you're my favourite now. Well, thank you very much. Who was your favourite? Who was your favourite in the past? Um, they're all great commentators. They all bring different styles and different strengths. Obviously, DC is, uh, when it comes to the wrestling side of things, and just all around being a likeable guy. Nobody better at that. I love you, Bisping. I wrote an essay for my disability university class, and you were the topic. Marco, that's lovely. That is lovely, Marco. Unless you're saying I wrote an essay for my disability university class and you were the topic. Unless you're saying that I'm, like, disabled. You wrote, a, 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 you wrote an essay on a disabled person and I was the topic. I'm not sure if I love that. I'm going to take it that you meant the first one. We'll go with that. Or the sumo odds just based on how heavy they are. No, they're not, mate, because just before we had a guy that was 380 pounds and he went up against this fella here with the white on. There he is, Brennan Moorfield. And he got smoked. Uh, he won in the white. That's why he's still in. But this is going to be interesting. We've got the big, big belly Barry 
fighting out of Brazil, otherwise known as Huey Jr. I like to call him Big Belly Barry. Do you know why? There they are. They, they adapt, adopt the sumo stance. Now they do the centuries-old sumo prep. They approach the center of the ring, stare each other down. They nod in appreciation. They nod in respect. And also as a sign of, oh, we've got a big stretch, big yawn, big belly barry. He's going in. My money's on Brendan Moorfield. Moorfield's got it. He's got it. Oh, oh. Big belly Barry uses the belly. Picked him up, leaned him back. Huey Jr. Huey Lewis in the news. Uh, what is it? Huey Lewis in the news. Might as well face it. You're addicted to love. No, it wasn't that. What, what, was, the, what was the song from Back to the Future? What was it? That was Huey Lewis in the news, wasn't it? Anyway, oh, dang, we need the name of these moves. It's the Big Belly Barry Banger. Oh, there he is. Barry's off again. Barry's starting hard. Moorfield, control yourself. He's down. Huey Jr., a.k.a. Big Belly Barry, is through to the next round. That was a good one. Because the guy in the white, I forget his name, he was really, really effective last time. And that Huey Jr. is clearly uh, a man that knows his shit. And clearly a man that has the correct physique for this, you know. Not being disrespectful. I mean, he's large. But he obviously has the skill to back it up as well. Anyway. Don't need no money. Don't need no fame. Don't need no credit card to ride this train. Is that a man as well? Face it, you That's... What's the, what's the chorus go like? What is the chorus? That's the power of love. <laughs> I shouldn't be having this much fun sitting here by myself, chatting away to you lot. My God. Power. That's the power of love. I love that song. Back to the Future, one of my favourite films of all time. Hip to B square. Yeah, power of love. There we go. There we go. Imagine you have to push triple B out of that circle. Yeah, Back to the Future, one of my favourite films. Went to uh, the film, movies, cinema. The pictures, as we called it in my day. The flicks, sometimes we called it that. Never called it the movies. Yeah, I went to the flicks, the cinema, to watch that. The picture house in Clitheroe. And uh, yeah, yeah, loved it. Anyway, whatever. I've seen Amadeus. I've seen bits of it, mate. Yeah, old old school, that. Amberly Rose, great Suez. I love Huey Lewis in the news. Thank you, Amberly. Yeah, me too. I love that song. I do. Puts a smile on my face every time. Oh, look at this. Now we've got proper sumo wrestlers. That's the fat Ric Flair. Oh, yeah, they love it in Japan. Look at that. That's the big, the world championship sumo. February 18th. I can find myself getting into this sumo lark. Anyway, love from Australia. Wayne Erickson, thank you very much. What do we think about O'Malley versus Marab? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, Marab de Valishvili is right there, isn't he? He's right there. And if he doesn't get the next shot, if it, it does go to Corey Sandhagen, he will be next. Mike, have you ever considered stand-up comedy? You already have Yoel, John Fury, and Left Up Larry. Who else has comedic personas? Well, I've got Big Belly Barry. <laughs> Let's see if we have a little chit-chat with these guys, see what they're saying. Anyway, yeah, no, do you know what? To be honest, when I did Tales from the Octagon, um, the first one was just like my life story. But told in a hopefully amusing comedic way so I guess it was kind of like a performance it was just me on stage this time round it was more nerve wracking because as I say the first one I was just talking about myself and telling some anecdotes about myself this time I had to open the show on stage by myself and do about half an hour so I did a half hour set of jokes comedic tales from the world of mixed martial arts uh and I'm not going to lie, it went down a fucking storm. It was great. The crowd were amazing. Uh, and I, my wife even found it funny. So there you go. So you never know. 
We're coming on. We're taking over. Uh, come to the East Coast with Tales from the Arts gone. I'd be shitting it, mate. Because the thing is, the thing is, I would love to come to Belfast with Tales from the Arts gone. I think I was meant to go there last time and, you know, it, it got cancelled. So I apologise about that. Uh, that was my fault. Um, in England, you know, I've got a big fan base there and I know I've got a support in the States as well. But uh, I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, I'll do it. If, if I got offered, if, if a promoter wanted to promote it, I'd do it. But I'm not doing it myself. See, that was the thing. For the, for the Tales from the Octagon in England, a promoter came to me, booked the venues and did all that type of stuff. All I had to do was create the show and turn up, which is a lot of work. But I didn't have to do any of the logistics side. So if somebody made me an offer, I'll do it. Because I can't turn down a pound note, can I? Uh, but yeah, anyway. You look like like a one dipped. You look like a one dipped in all-purpose flour. I don't know who that's um, aimed at. Anyway, got another super chat here. One of the best bits being... Oh, no, we did that one. My bad. Who headlines UFC 300? <laughs> Apparently, Dana White did a live, according to Harrington from a podcast. Dana did a live, and he said it's not going to be a matchup that anybody can predict. So that obviously has me very excited. Um, and it obviously kind of eliminates all the obvious uh, title matches, title fights that we would expect, you know, like Magomed Ankalaev and Pereira, Leon Bilal, all that type of thing. Tom Aspinall versus Cyril Garn, that might be on there. Brian Newby says it's going to be Tom for UFC 300, right? I think, I mean... I think that would be massive for Tom because, and I think it'd be great. I think it'd be great for the UFC as well because Tom is that guy. He's that guy. He's, he's going he's gonna to have a phenomenal career. He had one fight at Madison Square Garden, knocked out Sergei Pavlovich. Prior to that, he'd only fought on fight nights. You know what I'm saying? So he needs more of that exposure. So whilst it would be an incredible main event, the interim title getting defended in America, a UFC 300 on a ridiculous fight card. It's going to grow his star even more, you know? Certainly if he performs like he has in his last few fights. So um, that makes his fight with John Jones or Stipe when it does happen even bigger. Hi from Thailand says, Manx comedy guest lineup, Yoel Romero, I love you. John Fury. Left hook Larry. It's nice, but I yes. Big belly Barry. And history. Are you intoxicated? History teacher. Judge said Pierre. Which one looked like Harrington? None looked like Harrington. Sean 3 2. Keep saying it, Nathaniel Barnes. You might just will it into existence. UFC will lose all credibility if they don't allow Aspinall versus Jones to happen. Um, that's not down to the UFC. I mean, of course it is. It's their promotion. They, they make the fights. What I mean by that is that's down to John Jones. I think John Jones is the only person, or 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 it's down to Stipe. Let's remember, those guys are going to fight. So whoever wins that fight, that's down to them. Because you know for a fight the UFC want to do, Interim champion versus undisputed champion. That's the old bloody idea of doing it. You know what I mean? Can you do Donald Duck? Fuck off. I, I thought about it for a second, didn't I? Thought about it for a second. Jones won't fight Tom because he doesn't want to lose. His, his ego is too big. He's not humble like you, Bisbee. It's true. It's not humble like me, guys. Um, I don't think I mean listen how can you not have an ego when you're John Jones when you're the greatest of all time when nobody's beating you inside the octagon when you've wiped the floor with most of the competition is this the final let me put the headphones in let me see if this is the final because there's a bit of pomp and circumstance here and we're going to have a bit of a 
A little bit of commentary on here, boys and girls. And who is I think, oh, so this is the semi-finals, I think. Big Belly Barry. Will win tonight, advancing to number one champion. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, your semi-finalist makes it. Semi-finalist. Semi-finalist. Some serious stars on the doyo. All right, okay, okay. So we're gonna we're gonna mute that. Tom Aspinall's too much speed for anybody. Uh, Jones doesn't want that. Well, that's what I think. I really do. And I copped a bit of flack when I said that I don't think John Jones would hand, hold a candle to Tom Aspinall. And that is not me just being ridiculously um, biased towards Tom Aspinall. That's just me making an assessment. That's me looking at what Tom has done inside the octagon and being so impressed that I would say such an outlandish thing. Because it is outlandish. Because Jones is that great. John Jones is the greatest mixed martial artist that we've seen. And I'm saying that Tom beats him. I'm not saying that out of disrespect to John Jones. I'm saying that out of admiration for the skill set and the skills that Tom Aspinall has. That's the only reason. I'm right there with you. I say Jones is the greatest of all time. I think Big Belly, Be 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 Big Belly Barry would give him a good go as well, though. It is a fact. He is ridiculous. Tom is insane. You're right, Joe. I agree. I think Tom beats him. So do I. Don't be salty. Don't be salty. Jones always finds a way to win. You're correct, Roy, Ky Roy Reiser. You're right. I love Tom, but I don't see anybody beating John. And that's why it's interesting, isn't it? Because you're right. Jones always finds a way to win. And how would he find a way to beat Tom Aspinall? Right? How would he do that? On the feet, he could come up with a game plan, a strategy. He could use his kicks. He could keep distance. He could try and drag Tom to the later rounds, but nobody's done that yet. He could try and out-wrestle Tom. It's not impossible. Tom's a great wrestler, but Jones could potentially out-wrestle him, take him down. He could submit him. He could do all these different bloody things. Right? But, but, but could he formulate a game plan to where he could capitalize on a certain strength of his and a weakness of Tom's? And that's what makes the fight so incredible. That's why we all want to see it. And that's why Tom wants to have it. And the reason why we're always saying why Tom versus Jones and not Stipe is, is because it's not out of disrespect to Stipe. It's because right now, Jones has the belt. Jones has the resume. Jones is probably the GOAT. Stipe hasn't fought in a while, and he, the last time he did, he lost to Francis Ngannou. So that's why all the hype is around Jones. You know, it's no disrespect to Stipe Miocic. I'm a huge fan of his, and what a fighter he is as well. All right, so we've got a couple of uh, super chats in. Tackleberry says, thank you for knocking out Luke Rockhold. You took him off his high horse, and it was amazing to see. Oh, you got Big Belly Barry. Big Belly Barry for the gold. All right, Pinkasaurus Rex is back. You should turn a hallway in your house into your hall of fame so your family never forgets who you are. You know what, Pinkasaurus Rex? I think they still would. I get no respect. In like, the respect, Totem Pole, it's like, Rebecca, the kids, Harry, I'm somewhere between Harry and the budgies, or even between the two budgies, I'm down at the bottom, I don't even think in the hallway sticking the gold belts and a Hall of Fame trophy and some stuff like that, I don't think that would do anything either, but you know what, that's just the way I like it, I just get abused of everyone in the house, because I'm always silly. Right, I'm always being silly in the house and I'm always having a laugh and I'm very, 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 uh, very rarely being serious. Um, so they're very rarely serious with me back and it's just banter the whole time. Unless they go too far and then shit pops off real quick. You know what I'm saying? Uh, anyway, Prince Harry. Good old proud Prince. Mike don't count. At least you have us. Exactly, Brian William Smith. Exactly. That's it. 
That's it. What's with the sumo? Listen, J Mac. We just thought we'd put it on for a bit of a laugh. You know what I mean? The, what is it called? The International Sumo League Club Sumo. It gives me something to talk about, something to watch. And I'll be, I'll be honest, I'm very much enjoying it. The first rounds were very... Should we listen to what the commentators are saying? Let's listen. That's the three matches, the rules. If you exit or touch anything besides the soles of your feet to the mat, you're out. I love it. And talking about out, let's get in to our semifinals of the night. Our first one, heads to Jazz Sekiro. Semifinals are on. Let's go. Uh, how many more beatings does Tony Ferguson need to take to reach Cowboy Cerrone's level of a stepping stone? Well, I don't like the wording of the question because Tony's a legend. But I understand Creative Commons bear. Talking to bears, that's a big old boy. That's a big old boy. What is he weighing? Jeez Louise, let's just listen to this a second. We're talking to each other, sitting next to each other this morning, having coffee. So it's exciting to see them come out here and duke it out. I tell you what, that girl with the glasses, the commentator, in the white top, she knows her stuff. She really does know her stuff. It's to the final round. Three battles will decide this match. Introducing first on my left. All right, we don't need the Bruce Buffer. Um, so yeah, so yeah, I understand what you're saying, you know. Tony should retire. Simple as that. Tony Ferguson should call it a day. He's not, he's not coming back. He's not going to turn it around. It's going to be probably, because I'm not always correct, but more than likely a further decline, which is sad to see, right? Because we all love Tony and the career that he had. Did I ever spar with Baz? Meaning Baz Rutin? What do you think about his striking? I know he's a weight. Just curious if you know him. You guys or our favorite guys across the pond. Well, thank you very much, Jack Sparrow. Yeah, I know Bass Rutten. In fact, I've asked him a couple of times to come on the channel and do a little interview with me, and he's all about it, but then I just haven't got around to organizing it. So I will ask him one more time. I kind of feel disrespectful at this point because I dicked him around. We agreed a time, and I never got back to him. Uh, but I'm a huge fan of Bass Rutten. About to wrestle each other. Absolute legend. I do that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, big chemo. What's take going on here? We got some, we got some, he's turning his back. He's turning his back on him. How dare he? Absolutely. Yeah. But he's getting ready. Come on. He's getting down. Tom Storm is getting ready also. Let's see who puts the hands down first. Come on. In a minute. Get in position. Rashi. Basira. Oh. Semi-final clash. Oh, my fight. My washi fight. Oh, yeah. Oh, That's my it. God. That's it. It's a big surprise. He was too, he was too eager. Too eager, you know. Yeah, Baz Root is the man. Big Belly Barry. Yeah, Big Belly Barry's still in it, guys. Guys, we're, 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 we're all team Big Belly Barry. That ain't Big Belly Barry. That's Big Belly Brett. Oh, sorry. It's Big Belly Bob. What am I saying? Dude's wedging it up his ass. No, no, no. Let's go, though. I'm really excited for the debut of Eric Sean. <laughs> He's coming in hard. Uh, all right, round two is up. Oh, nice big smile on the face. This is just fun and games. This is just competitiveness. Camille Besara. What, what flag is that? Does anybody know? I'm not sure what flag that is. Big Belly Bob. Bisping on Karate Combat commentary. All right, let's go. Let's go. Purple was a little bit overzealous last time. He was too aggressive for his own good. Big belly Brett. Oh, Purple's coming back. Careful, he's going to sweep him. He's going to sweep him. One more push. Oh, there it is. That was nice. Now, this is not me being stupid. I do believe that was a minor inner reap, which in Japanese terminology, I believe is a ko o soto gari. Ko o soto gari is the major out of reap. Ko soto gari. Uh, I might be wrong, it's been a long time since I did Japanese jiu-jitsu, but that was a nice, I think it was a minor inner reap. Very good. Look at that, celebrating and rightly bloody so. Nice bit of technique on there. 
Right, anyway. No man alive should ever wear a big nappy. Feel the thun... Iraq. Oh, it's Iraq, is it? Okay. Full pooper Freddy. Good old Gary. Thoughts on MP Mike Oxmall Grimm? Nice bloke. Nice and fat. <laughs> wow. <They're> nice. <laughs> nice bloke. <laughs> nice and fat. Oh my God. You're an idiot. You're a bloody idiot. Right, here we go. Round, what is this? Round three. Guys, this is the decider. This is the tiebreaker. Breathe it in. Suck it up. Because this is the deciding moment. It all comes down to this. Every moment, every kebab that you ate, every cheeseburger that you ingested, and every time you didn't get on the treadmill comes down to this moment. Who's got it? Who's got the calories? Who's got the pounds? Who's got the determination to throw you around? A nice 50-50 here. They've got an over on the grip. Camille Bizarra, they're the jockey in for position. What's this guy called on the side? That is Arashi. Okay. There we go. It's a close one, this. Oh, oh, there it is. Basira. Oh, 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 oh. Just driving back. Uses that belly to great effect. He kind of bumped him with the belly. Hold on. I wonder what you feel like. The nerves right there because your foot is on the rope. It's on the ring, on the circle. Oh! Pushed him with great force, mind, the, mind you. Pushed him into the crowd. It's making me hungry. It's making me hungry. I'll tell you another thing that's making me hungry. She's cooking dinner. I'm starving. He's got a good grip on the crap strap. Tom the Tub Titanic. <laughs> Toilets in that facility are obliterated. Oh, fucking hell. There's some funny ones here. Oh, dear. They are. They listen. It's very childish to make fun. They're, these are. They're, they're very impressive. That was a good matchup, actually. That was a very good matchup. Control, alt, delete. Yeah, piss off. That was a good scrap, a good matchup. I enjoyed that one. That was a close, close one. He did grab the crap strap. The crap strap. As if I'm calling it the crap strap. All right. Osuna, Osuna Arashi is the winner. I'm going to give you a bit of full frontal on me for a second just while we wait for the next match to come out. Um... So, wonder if waxing is mandatory. No, it's not. But so, Bisping, just entering the stream, how f would you fare in sumo wrestling? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I'd do that good, to be honest. Callum is, obviously, he's a wrestler. And he's bigger than me. I think I, I'd have a go. Because you're not going to get hurt, are you? You're not going to get hurt. I mean, you might do, like, you might twist an ankle or a knee or whatever, but generally there's not as much impact as actual wrestling because you're not landing on top of your opponent for the most part. That does happen, of course. Um, sign me up. Combat Sumo. International Sumo League. Sign me up. Mikey B's making a comeback. Would I kiss my coach? Look. I don't know what's going on with Drickus there. I'm a huge fan of Drickus. I think he's awesome. He's a great guy. His team are fantastic. And I think that's just a cultural thing. There's a lot of different cultures in the world. All right. I'm not the type of guy to kiss another man on the lips. I think we all know that. But fair play. Obviously, they've got no issue with it. <laughs> and Drickus Duplessis is not a gay man. He's not a gay man. And even if he was, he wouldn't be kissing his coach. Do you know what I mean? That must be like some South African thing. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. That's, you know what I mean? I mean, hey, fair play. He's very comfortable with his sexuality. And to think anything less of it or anything more of it is very immature, guys. It's very, very immature. The bollock hammock. I like that one as well. <laughs> He's a little gay. He's... <laughs> He's not gay. Right, do you know Mark Hunt? Just joined the UFC again. 
Or did you know my cunt? Oh, good one. Right, here we go. Big Belly Barry. Whoa. Round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are in the world. Rui Junior taking on Soslan Gagloff. Soslan versus Junior, a.k.a. Big Belly Barry. This is going to be a good one, this, guys. I'm excited for this one. We've got Barry. Barry's taking this one all day. I tell you, this international sumo stuff, sign me up, I'm serious. Send me a, ping me an email. No one should use that. Who wins? Good lad, John, good lad. Big Belly Barry. Big Belly Barry is who we junior. What are you doing, John? <laughs> 90%. Let's go. Big Belly Barry is who we junior. Oh, no man alive. Should be naming the same person in the poll. John, I'm going to end the poll. I'm going to end the poll. Do it again. Do it again. Who wins? Big Belly Barry. Right? Oh, oh shit, I'm fucking it right up. Who wins? Big Belly Barry or... Oh, we don't have it. What's his name? What's his bloody name? Big Belly Barry. I'll have a listen. We'll have a listen. Introducing on my left, 386 pounds Who we from Brazil, Who we Big Belly Barry. His opponent on my right, 357 pounds from Alania, Russia, Big Bear Sosland. Big Belly Barry versus Gagliard. Head referee. Oh, All right, so who we got? Who we got? In the Doyo Madison, like you uh, mentioned, Sasan Gaslaw came to the States and played on the Jacksonville Jaguars and the St. Louis Rams practice teams as a nose guard. All right, here we and go. He's shown tonight that he knows how to get in there. For the 900 people that have been on here consistently. Uh, very fast. <laughs> Let's get Hold this. On. Huey Jr., a.k.a. Big Huey Belly Jr. Barry. gives the fans what they want. Gagliot, Plus 120, there gets right in there. I'm Gagliot. Full the start. Full oh, start. Oh, yeah. oh. I'm going to give my own commentary for this one. Thank you very much. No, no offense to the commentators there. They do a fantastic job, but, you know, you don't want to hear three people talking, do you? Uh, so, right, center of the ring. It's a funny, weird approach from Gagliot. Belly Barry trying to grab the cax crack crap strap. Oh, Gagley off. Oh, Barry's out. No, he's not. No, he's not. He's back in. He's back in. Gagley off, holding tight, holding firm. Speaking of holding firm, he's grabbing the bollock hammock. Both men are grabbing the bollock hammock, the crap strap. Big belly with a big push. Gagley off turns him. I tell you what. Hey, fair play to Belly Barry, though. He got beat there, didn't he? But he had such an ability when he was almost out to stay back, to stay in. That is not easy to do. Huey Jr., of course, I'm talking about, a.k.a., but Gagliot got the job done. Let's listen to the replay. Five lift down, battle one winner. We can feel the replay, so... Uh, but uh, Sassler will get it. Sassler and Gagliot moving yeah. up. 1-0 against Huey Jr. It's Saslan Gaglov, we've got a question here. There's a Mark Kerr movie, and The Rock is going to play him. Hopefully they don't leave Baz out, since he's the one who trained him. If my spelling is shit, sorry. The moonshine is legit. Well, Jack Sparrow, yeah, I hope Baz Rutten. I mean, listen, Baz Rutten's a true legend of MMA. Uh, it's great to see that he's still doing big things, obviously commentating Karate Combat. He had that show, what was it? What was it called? Inside MMA or something like that. I forget what it was called. Um, great commentator for Pride, world uh, UFC champ at one point as well. So yeah, shout out Baz Rutten, and just 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 an awesome human being. Really, really fucking funny man. Baz Rutten's a funny guy. Never mind that big big belly Barry. Let's go. Russia versus Brazil, the rematch. Belly Barry needs to pull it out the back. He's down one. If he loses this, it's over. They're in the middle, establishing grip. Establishing dominance, contemplating the next movement, waiting for another man to make a mistake. Barry presses forward. Gagliov forces him out, and that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Big Belly Barry goes home. 
Big Belly Barry, after barrage, after a big barrage from Big Belly Barry was the boundary for this business being Bova. <laughs> anyway, Big Belly Barry had a do, but Saslan Gaglioff, he was strong, man. He was actually really good. I enjoyed that. I don't know. I mean, Big Belly Barry, man, I'm going to be devastated to see him go. I think he's a fan favourite I'm around here. He's going to be back, bring him back, Combat Sumo 2. International Sumo Club Sumo 2. Anyway, anyway, Saslan Gaglioff, hey, you beat the man, you become the man. There is only one champ. Right now, guys, he's inherited the support of this channel. We are all behind Saslan Gaglioff, right? Mike is fucking silly as fuck. I am, I am. Well, what do you want me to do? Sitting there trying to bloody get through my time, having a little drinkle stinkle. Watching sumo. Big belly Barry beaten bad. <laughs> good one, good one. Alliteration. We need more alliteration. Big belly Barry being broken because Bill barfed on his bed. Paddy the pudding. Look at how pink they are. Saslon, good match there, good little drinkle stinkle. There you go, North Sea. Bispin, when are you getting in there? I'd have a do. These are big boys, though. I mean, listen, it's easy for me to sit here having a laugh, and I'm being sarcastic. Fair play to them, man. They're out there, they're entertaining people, they're having fun, they're challenging themselves. And there's some good, there's a good fair bit of technique on as well. Um, so, yeah, they, they would throw me around like a rag doll. You should see what my son does to me. When Callum comes home from college, he always grabs me for like a quick wrestle. It's always in the kitchen, always on hardwood floor, you know. And he just, uh, he fucking ragdolls me, throws me all over the place. I've got a video on my members. If you're a member, you can see it. He ragdolls me with great ease and satisfaction, mind you. Right, I'm a fighter on UFC 300. I don't even think I need to answer that question, mate, but for the record, it's a no. International Sumo League presents the World Championship Sumo. There we go. Is there a women's league? I don't know. I'd like to see it. Big. Big Belly Betty. Right, Jay Paul is the greatest fighter of all time. All right. Okay. Okay. I feel for you. If you actually think that. Jay Paul versus Bisping. He tried to make it happen. He sent me a contract. He sent me a contract to my manager, Ori Atar, Paradigm Sports Management. I don't need no Jake Paul. Love that haircut. Are you talking to me or are you talking to Big Belly Barry? The other guy who wins the tournament, Saslon Gagliov? I think so. I think he does. Taking out the Barry like that is not easy. Big Belly Betty. Ship sailed. It did. The ship sailed. We've, we've, we've beaten that one. <laughs> We've beaten the big belly, Barry. Let's leave it there. How uncomfortable is it wearing a fancy suit for the whole fight? It's not uncomfortable at all, actually. Uh, you, we're very lucky. The UFC, uh, you know, they help us out with the suits. When I first started, I got all my own suits. Now the UFC, they, they, they uh, you know, they have a budget for new suits. So, yeah, they're nicely custom tailored and stuff like that. So they fit great. Uh, it's always nice to get it off, though. It's ma the main thing is the tie buttoned up. You know what I mean? Because I go through phases. One week, I'm fucking a little chubby. The next week, I'm all skinny. And I must have got the shirts done on a skinny week. You know, because on a fat week, I'm literally, with the top button done up, I'm literally getting choked. No man alive should be commentating for seven hours while slowly being asphyxiated. Asphyxiated? Asphyxiated. I want to say asphyxiated. Anyway, yeah. So, yeah. It's always nice to undo that top button. It's that beer bloating. I don't really drink too much beer. I do like a pint, but don't drink too much beer. Sorry, mate. You got to go. Poor man's Robert De Niro there. Uh, all right. Bisping, asphyxiated, asphyxiated, asphyxiated. Bisping, come back and fight Strickland. Asphyx. The Michael, the MB was a nice touch on your shirt. Oh, thank you very much. That was a new tailor that I just started working with, Mark Russell. Yeah, Mark Russell, based in Florida. Check him out. So you guys noticed that, did you? I did like that, the little MB on the sleeve. I didn't think anyone would pick up on that, so that's nice. 
That's nice. Anyway, why do sumos wear thongs? I feel like that's a joke. Why do sumo wear thongs? Uh -huh. I actually don't know. It's obviously some Japanese tradition. Bisping, fancy Zingano who just called you out for a boxing match. Joshua pulled out. Sign me up, brother. You give me $20 million. I'll do it for a million dollars. I'll go, I'll go spa. I'll go box Francis Ngannou. Not saying I beat him. But I would definitely do a few rounds with Ngannou. Especially if you're paying me stupid money, of course. Anyway, those are good for the athletic movement. Ask Chael Sonnen. Yeah, well, American wrestling does that as well, don't they? They seem to... Here we go. It's all come down to this. Guys, these 16 Warriors have been whittled down one by one. Finally, in the final round, we have Saslon Gaglioff, who defeated Big Belly Barry by shocking upset, taking on... Oh, no. Oh, it's the, it, it's, it's the, it's the runner-up. Big Belly Barry's back. Taking on Camille Basira. This must be for third and fourth. Yeah, this is for third and fourth. Big Belly Barry's back. Oh, let's go. Let's go. Let's go, Barry. Have I paused it or something? Why isn't it playing? A four-inch height deficit. Kamal Basira, yes, also four years older. Minus, minus 115 each. Jazz Securo. Big Belly Barry's 386. His opponent is 37 something, I saw. They call him Big Belly Barry for a reason. And the reason is he's got a big belly. All right, anyway, fight Vito. I did that. He was on steroids, mate. I'm retired. Stop telling me to fight people. I've still got it, though. No, listen, mate. I don't even think about fighting these days. Utterly, totally done. Been there, done it. Got the T-shirt. You know what I mean? Had the scars, got the memories, made some money, turned my life around. Yeah, I, I'm not that same guy. I mean, don't get me wrong. If, 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 if it was a serious situation, of course. But generally, I, I don't even think, I don't even react the same way. You know, you change as a person as you get older. You know, like that kind of wild man doesn't really exist. I used to have a terrible temper. I used to be a fucking maniac. Sometimes I still am. But for the most part, that guy doesn't even exist anymore. At all. Still competitive, though. Oh, love fist. There you go. Do we watch the Conor McGregor Roadhouse trailer? Yes, for the thousandth, thousandth time. Um, I did. Can't really judge anything. There's nothing to see. There's nothing to judge. You will never be, be anything less, Mike. You're a fighter. Well, thank you. But tonight's all about Big Belly Barry. Can I see my kids doing MMA? Well, Lucas wrestled, sorry, Callum wrestled, and Lucas trains MMA. He trains MMA at the Den in Yorba Linda, the Den Training Center. Um, tremendous gym. He's coached, ran, or the head coach is Ben Jones. Trained by Eric Paulson, CSW in Fullerton. Tremendous coach. Ben Jones is fantastic. I used to train with him as well back in the day a little bit. Um, so, yeah, the Ben. Uh, sorry, sorry, the Den. Sorry, ben Jones at the Den. Big Belly Barry's Ben. Uh, yeah, the Den, Yorba Linda. That's where he trains. And he's got a great coach from a young age. I wish I was training with somebody like that when I was 13 years old. Uh, so who knows? Lucas loves sparring. You never know, maybe one day, but he's a smart kid. But you never know. Never, you never know. We've got in-depth analysis for third and fourth. We all just want to see the main event. We just want to see Big Belly Barry. Lucas is going to be an animal. He actually is. He actually is. Do I still live in Anaheim? It's freaking amazing. He's in SoCal. Yeah, we do, mate. Anaheim Hills. Say hi to my son, Colby. What up, Colby? Michael's a hooligan. I had my moments. I had my moments, sadly. I did. Macmeth, probably. Can't be shedding pounds. Bisman, do you think you could beat McGregor in a street fight? Come on. Um, Tom is the baddest man on the planet. Glad he doesn't make out with his coach. Oh, oh, Maron, Maron. 
Um, that's what they do in South Africa. I don't know. I'll have to ask him what that's all about. Not from a... Listen, I'm not a child. You know what I mean? I'm assuming it's some South African thing. If anybody knows about it, I'd love to know. It's obviously some kind of tradition or... Maybe it's not. Maybe it's just really happy. He's going to... Right on the kisser. Just give him a big old kiss. Eh, fair play. Fair play. Not my vibe, but who cares? Who am I to judge? I'm sitting there talking to you lot whilst I watch fucking sumo wrestling. Do you know what I mean? He'd probably say the same thing to me. How are you feeling since my last surgery? Um, what was my last surgery? I'm going in again soon. Get this wrist taken care of. My neck's killing. I'm having that. I had a procedure yesterday, but it was just a test. Just a test. The test went well, but it's worn off. Um, yeah, so my neck's fucked. My neck's fucked. And um, what they want to do is an, an ablation. So they fry the nerves. So they fry the nerves so you don't feel the pain. And hopefully, I'll have five years of no pain. But the insurance companies, because out here in America, obviously the insurance is ridiculous. Um, they want to test it twice before they actually do the full procedure. So they, they inject you with lidocaine into the nerves or in that area to see if it works. And it did, it worked. It worked the first time, worked the second time. So now, hopefully, in a few weeks, I can go in and get the actual thing done. Because I'm sitting here, my fucking neck is killing, man. It's always painful. Gives me bad headaches all the time as well. Come on, ref, we're just waiting for the bloody semi-final to be done. And then I'm out of here. My dinner's ready. My tea's ready. Some sumo shit, but I love listening to you. Well, thank you, Mayo. That guy with the grey gray beard looks like he does jujitsu with candy cans. Now, should you ever listen to the intro? Third place, please welcome to the dojo, Kamel Basira and Huey Jr. Is, here we go. Huey Jr. and Big Pimo, Kamel Basira meet in the third place matchup. Big belly Somebody's Barry. Somebody's got to get bronze. Both guys have displayed some Let's really go. strong styles. I mean, Madison, your thoughts? I'm excited. The crowd is excited. The chemo and, and who? He's become a fan favorite around the Michael Bisping channel. This is my guy. Huey Jr. Huey Jr. and the boys. You're addicted to love. No, what is it? That's the power of love. Might as well face it. You're addicted to love. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going out of my mind here. Just hurry up, Big Belly Barry. Get the job done. So we can all go about our bloody business. No man alive has a belly like Barry. Big Belly Bolton. Paddy in sumo. Let's go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. It's the big introduction. Should we have the official introduction? Let's have it. Let's have the official intro. <laughs> Running on third man inside the, the dojo for this third this. place I matchup. Know. Gotta say, I did not love Huey Jr.'s facial expressions during that intro. He's concentrated. Yeah, he's getting he's getting his mind ready. Yeah. I he, think this is going to be a good matchup. I think it's going to be a close one. Barry looks nervous. Important uh, moment in the fight. Coin flip on the betting side. Minus 15 Here for we both go. the chemo. There's the crack from Huey Jr. Huey Jr. in the news. That's the power of love. One with my chiropractor when I get back. <laughs> Who is ready? He's Where ready. are we He's going? We don't need roads. Junior. Basura. All right, let's Third go. place on the line. Oh, shit. I paused. A big chemo. All right. Let's have the commentary. Mawashi, but Huey's doing a good oh. job with the Mawashi himself. Oh, we have oh, a winner. We have a winner. Huey Jr. gets the first strike, first blood. Yeah. Barry's back in it. Took off of the doyle. Yep. Big belly, Barry's back. Out. Here's that replay, big chemo, Hans. He just yeah. slid out. It's out of fault of the doyle. Yep. So uh, he should start the stop there. That's all it takes is one step. Yep. What a tactical error by Big Chemo, letting himself get pushed to that point of the go in the first place. Right, I mean, Huey did a good job, though, controlling the Mawashi and pushing him to the edge. It's a chunk of time. Round two, here we go. All we need, Big Belly Barry, for the big comeback. Come on, Barry. I know, I feel emotionally attached. 
We're along for the journey. Yo, this is fire content. Thank you, Digital Dan. Here we go. Right, so it's fine for third place. It's fine for pride, for glory. Oh, bit of a back slap from the other fella. Who we junior? Who we Lewis in the news? Might as well face it. You're addicted to love, Big Belly Barry. Is the best. To Huey Jr., the Great Brazilian. Match. Great matchup. Yeah. You know, I gotta say, I'm a bit surprised. Big Who are we Lewis in the news? One of the Big Belly Barry. Osuna Arashi. So for Barry Clutch. Let's have your best Barrys, or your best alliteration for the bees. Wins a, <laughs> wins a cake. <laughs> oh, you bastards. We're going to wrap this one up in a minute, guys. Been going for over two bloody hours, sitting here watching this sumo stuff. I actually very much enjoyed it. I know I've been a bit silly. I hope if anyone sees this, you don't take anything I said as disrespectful. Just having a laugh, being a little bit silly, as you know. But Big Belly Barry, a.k.a. Huey Jr. and the news, is addicted to love. You might as well face it. That's the power of love. Uh, well done on getting third. Yeah. Good stuff, good stuff. Big Belly Barry B beat and bollocks. No, Big Belly Barry won. Well, he got third, he got third. Mike, did having kids affect your fighting career? Yeah, it, it made it happen. If it weren't for my kids, I wouldn't have done the soul searching required to figure out that I wanted to do something productive with my life. Because when I was young and I didn't have kids, I wasn't really too bothered. I was like, I'm having a good time. I'm enjoying myself. I'm going to the pub with my mates and hanging out. And I thought that's what life was all about. Just going, hanging out with your friends, having a good time, you know. Only when the kids came around, I suddenly realized, hold on a minute, it's not about me anymore. Now I've got to take care of them. I've got to give them a good life. You know, just like Big Belly Barry, we all go on our paths. We have our roads to walk. Barryzilla gave up a lamb chop, a rough way to go. Thanks for hosting this. It's fun. Well, thank you, DLR978. Does Piotrian fight for another title? Ooh. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a tricky one, isn't it? I don't know, because he's kind of fallen off a little bit. Love you, Bisping, you're a legend. Thank you, Devil's Advocate. I'll tell you what, Club Sumo, sign me up. Sign me up, I like it. I like the club sumo. It's a nice bit of fun. Mike, you've been killing it with YouTube content. Thank you very much. I'll be doing a video for tomorrow morning. So make sure you come back and watch it. Uh, and thank you to Club Sumo for allowing me to stream it on here. You know, a lot of the time, because the thing is, if you show anything on YouTube, a lot of the time they'll demonetize it and it affects your channel and things like that. And they said uh, I could show it if I wanted, so... Yeah, I showed it and a few of you guys showed up so yeah thank you for watching everyone thank you to Combat Sumo Club Sumo should I say uh, and good luck to the finalists but my dinner's ready and I'm starving so I'm going to get out of here and that's about it one more time Big Belly Barry you're the man sure, alright we might as well watch the final right do we oh, Do we want to see the everyone shout out Mike's brother comrade thank you Dina, Denial D Neil 218, you're right. My older brother Comrade. Don't see Comrade much. He's a great guy. He had a nasty accident in the army. We'll leave it at that. Um, yeah. Hope you're well, Comrade. He lives in Wales. Mike Bisps, big up from Vegas. Well, my dinner is ready though, guys. So on that note, I'm gonna leave you. If you want to see the final, you get yourself over to fight.tv check it out there club sumo there'll be more of these coming along as well so yeah thanks for watching appreciate you all see you soon take care guys